What's up guys, Duarte here with another Marvel Cyber Force video and in this video we are back to take a look at the best characters for Dark Dimension 6 so you can unlock the best character in the game, Super Scroll. This is going to be based on the meta teams that we have right now in the game whether it is for Raids, Alliance Wars or Cosmic Crucible and we are going to try to overlap as much as possible the cheapest characters with the best characters in terms of utility in Dark Dimension but also with the value they have in other game modes and also on their own teams and uh, this is going to help you out to not only manage your resources better but also making sure that the investment you make for Dark Dimension will also reflect in other sides of the game Super Scroll is still the best character in the game and it's going to be like this at least for a couple of months more until we have Dark Dimension 7 and Mephisto and when that time arrives then we also have to take a look at the, the mythical characters which right now we are not going to mention because the mythical characters are still not relevant enough so as always if you like the information on these videos make sure to share it with your friends on Facebook and Discord if you're new to my channel make sure to subscribe for more Marvel Star Force content and make sure to smash that like button like a boss okay so if you guys don't know, I was one of the first uh, content creators, or maybe the first content creator to complete uh, Dark Dimension 6. I have completed it one of the fastest runs post uh, the, the normal runs to unlock Super Scroll. And also, I did uh, with the least amount of attempts without uh, using power cores or anything like that. So you can know for sure that uh, the, the information you're going to get is pretty legit. In terms of timer, we are at 600 with like six days, but I can do this in three days or two days. I have to use my Dark Dimension 6 runs in order to complete the... in order to test the different characters. Now, we are also going to take a look at the newest characters in the game. And we are briefly going to talk about Carnage and Venom. And you're going to start by that. Now, both Carnage and Venom got reworks. And uh, between the two, I think Venom is the better one. The problem with these characters are, is that they are just way too expensive. So they are definitely characters that I would not take to Dark Dimension. In terms of the other two characters that we have new, Venom and Void Knight, we are also going to briefly mention them when I take a look at my recommended characters, where they, they will have a little bit more value than uh, Carnage or Venom. So they might be options for you to take uh, for Dark Dimension 6 as their uh, kit might trickle down in other situations in the game but we don't know for sure it's a little bit too early to tell as we don't have information on the last member of this team so a few things on their kit might change from now until then okay so with this said with these brief uh, thoughts on the newest characters let's take a look at the characters that I actually recommend for Dark Dimension 6 and uh, as you can see, this is divided by types. So we have Bio, we have Mutant, we have Mystic, we have Skill, and we have Tech. Of course, at, at the top, we have the best characters of each type. And uh, also, some of these characters are also the cheapest. Sometimes cheap does not mean better, but other times cheap definitely means better. So keep that in mind. Just because they are cheap does not, does not mean that they're not bringing you value. Okay, so the first uh, we're going to address all the bio characters. So we have Tigra. Tigra right now, she's the main character of the new Avengers, a very powerful Alliance Wars team. And a team that has been trickling down in terms of value in uh, Cosmic Crucible as well. She's very cheap, she does tons and tons of damage, she's a tank, so investing on this character is going to be good for you, and uh, that's why she's at the top, because not only she brings you the value, but it's also cheap, so it's definitely an option for Dark Dimension 6. After that, we have a Zombie Juggernaut, very powerful character in multiple game modes. Then we have Abomination, very powerful character, showed a lot of value now in the the Escape from Kalne Tower mode. And uh, we we have here Abomination, but you can also mention Hulk. OG Hulk is still pretty decent, and you can take him for uh, Dark Dimension 6. If you have him with the Eliza White, he can be quite annoying and protect the other characters that, uh, that will clear the nose for you. Now we have Moonstone. Moonstone, she has a lot of value in Cosmic Crucible, and her value sometimes also shows up 
in uh, tower-like game modes. But we can also talk about Titania, as uh, she's also part of the same team, so you have to choose between one or another. If you want Moonstone or Titania, I prefer Moonstone over Titania, but I could see other people going other way. And then the last bio character I would recommend is Captain America. He's okay, but he is... Um, is uh, going losing value quite a lot with the introduction of the Hive Mind team, as the Rebirth team will no longer be part of the raid meta. He still has some value in Alliance Wars. He still has some value in Cosmic Crucible on specific situations, but those situations don't require a lot of gear. So keep that in mind. Okay, now in terms of the mutant characters, we have Nightcrawler one of the best characters in the game in terms of plug and play value. We have Apocalypse. Apocalypse is not on the first place because for new players, the newest of the newest players, if you are trying to clear Dark Dimension 5 or 6 or 4, Apocalypse is not a character that you should be looking forward to. He is a good character but only for veteran players. If you are a new player, focus on completing Dark Dimension 6 and then you can obtain Apocalypse and uh, use him for Dark Dimension 7. After Nightcrawler and Apocalypse, we have to talk about Gambit and Forge. Those are two very powerful mutants that you should definitely consider because they have a lot of value in other game modes. And finally, we have uh, Nemesis, but this is definitely a character that you should avoid as much as possible in today's meta when you are talking about uh, mutant characters. Okay, now we're going to talk about uh, Mystic characters. And for Mystic characters, the best character in the game right now for Global is Spider Weaver. No question, anyone that says, no, it's Quicksilver, no, you're wrong. The best character for Dark Dimension 6 that also has value in other game modes is going to be Spider Weaver. Quicksilver is right after, but Spider Weaver is better because she's cheaper. And because her unique is also easier to obtain. So people need to understand this, that it's not only the, the perceived value, but also what, uh, what costs to bring these characters up. And the faster you get to Dark Dimension 6, the better it will be for you. Okay, so Spider Weaver, best Mystic character by far. Then Quicksilver, then Doctor Doom. Even that uh, Doctor Doom, gearing, gearing up Doctor Doom too much can be a problem. And then we have Agatha. Agatha, people forget about uh, the value of Agatha versus cosmic hero characters. And with the introduction of uh, the new Hive Mind team, we have another cosmic character where Agatha will have an advantage over. So we might see more value in the Agatha coming in the future, depending on which enemies we are facing and which characters are part of the meta. And then we have uh, Bashenga. This was just the last mystic character that has any value in current meta. You can use him in Alliance Wars, you can use him in Cosmic Crucible, you can use him sometimes in uh, Tower Game Modes. So he's definitely a character that you should consider and he's probably one of the best Wakanda characters that we have in the game. Okay, now in terms of skill, we don't have a lot of options. Unfortunately, the best option by far is going to be Captain Sam because of the speed bar and the energy that he provides. A lot of value in uh, multiple game modes. Then it's going to be Black Widow. She's part of the infestation team, which is Alliance Wars defense. Even though that team was never very, very good. And outside of Alliance Wars defense, she does not have a lot of value. Uh, sometimes in Cosmic Crucible, but not really. The same goes for Echo. She's part of Alliance Wars defense, but her team uh, is long gone and forgotten. So it, she doesn't really matter, but sometimes she brings value when you are facing teams that have a lot of assist mechanics, like Infinity Watch, Dead Seed, and so on. And when we have Cosmic Crucible rooms, where we have assist mechanics like we have right now. Then we have Sharon Carter, very powerful controller. She has a stun with 5000 focus, very important sometimes in Cosmic Crucible and Alliance Wars. She also applies defense down an ability block, which also has a lot of value. And that's why she's on the list. And finally, we have Iron Fist World War II. This guy has a stun and he's slow and he's cheap. That's it. <laughs> that's why he's here. He's one of the best skill options, but it's just because there are no skill options. Okay, now in terms of tech, we have Iron Man Infinity War. This guy is amazing. This guy is so good. Definitely one of the best characters that you can take for the global section. Then we have Lady Death Striker. She's very cheap and she's very powerful special because she does turning winds and if you can kill one enemy 
she will turn the wind with her special for 40%, which is just absolutely massive. Then we have Iron Heart. She's nice. She applies slow. She applies stun. So because of that, she will have some value. Then we have Ultron. He, Ultron is going to be part of the mythical characters going forward. So he has some value in that Dimension 6. He's quite expensive. So it's definitely not a priority. It's just if you like the character, right? I think it's the best option in case you want to play it casual. But it's definitely not an option if you want to be competitive when it comes to completing Dark Dimension 6. And finally, we have Rescue. Rescue is okay for now. She'll probably still have some value in the future. But we don't know for sure how much more. Because these raid teams, they last like 9 months or so. And then it's pretty much came over for them. Even that the Pegasus team was built in a way that they should have long lasting value, but we don't know how much for sure. Okay, so this is the global section. Once again, we have Bio Mutant, Mystic, Skill, and Tech. Now let's take a look at the cosmic options. And this one is divided by Mystic, Bio, Tech, or Skill, Skill, and then Tech and Mutant. And as you guys can see, unfortunately, in terms of Tech, Mutant, Skill and Bio options, we don't have a lot of options, so it's just the way it is. Okay, so for the best mi Mystic option, we have Val, she's absolutely insane because she can revive multiple characters in Dark Dimension, that's very important. She also applies Exposed to the enemies, which is great, she's going to get Energy, Barrier and some other things, I don't remember, but she's great. Then we have Cersei, Cersei is the best Eternal right now for Dark Dimension. Icarus is better in all game modes, all other game modes, but for Dark Dimension specifically, Cersei is better. Then we have better Rebuild. He has a stun, he fl flips positive effects on the enemies. He synergizes very well with Val. So if you like better Rebuild, if you are a big fan, this could be a character that you could consider. Then we have Thanos. Thanos is a cheap option. He has a trash centerpiece unique. He has a combination of tech gear and also mystic gear, which lowers his cost when you are getting him up for Dark Dimension 6. And then we have Doctor Strange, which is very cheap as well, and he's part of a great team. Some people don't really value Doctor Strange a lot, but he can do some funny stuff, and sometimes it's not what he does, it's what he allows other characters to do. He can also revive other characters, and that can be also extremely convenient on Dark Dimension 6. In case your Val dies, you can revive her. And if Strange dies, then Val revives him. So you can have some synergies like that. Now, in terms of the bio characters, the best bio option is going to be Photon. Some people are shitting on, Vo on Photon. Shut the fuck up. Like, you don't know what the fuck you're saying. Photon is still amazing. And... Uh, if you think Photon is bad because you are using an on defense, well, use her on offense with the uh, A-Force. Photon is very, very good. She applies blind for multiple characters. She gives speed up to herself, she heals up, she does tons of damage with, with her abilities, with her charge mechanic from her passive. So she's definitely the best option for you to take to Dark Dimension 6. Then we have Void Knight. This is the symbiote Silver Surfer. And this guy is okay let's say that he's okay he's a little bit on the slow side but because he is one of the characters that gives hp and armor to himself and to his team he has a little bit more value compared to other characters that don't give stats to themselves then we have phyla veil she provides barrier she applies offense down she provides drain to characters with death proof even if they are not part of her team so he's definitely a character with a lot of value is she, she is she better than void knight Probably not, because she's an ancient character, and Void Knight is a brand new character that once again gives stats to himself. So because of that, Void Knight is better than Phylavel. Okay, now we have the skill characters, and the Kestrel is skill and tech. And uh, Kestrel got a, a rework recently, and because she's part of the Pegasus team, and we saw in Global that Pegasus has a lot of value, you definitely want to invest in Kestrel. Kestrel also synergizes with hero uh, with the cosmic allies so even if you are using her together with uh, a character like thanos she's going to get additional hp which is great and she uses tech gear and skill gear making her more affordable to get up the second best option is not a great option it's just what we have we don't have a lot of good characters that are uh, good in uh, in skill and cosmic it's star lord annihilation he's part of the nowhere team they have some 
value in Alliance Wars. They have some value, maybe sometimes in Cosmic Crucible and uh, Avengers Tower, but not a lot. And finally, we have uh, Moon Dragon. And Moon Dragon, she's not great in uh, Dark Dimension 6. But because her team is pretty decent, you can get some value out of this character. And also, if you are bringing Falavella along, the two of them together will be okay, I guess. Finally, we have uh, the tech option. And the only tech option that is good is Kang. All the other options are uh, pretty much skippable. You should just forget about them. And in terms of uh, mutant characters, the only mutant character that has any value is magic and that's just because she's very cheap so if you don't want if you don't want to spend tech gear or bio gear or skill gear or whatever you can bring magic once again because she's just so cheap and sometimes she can slot in in mutant teams but it's not like she's meta by any means it's just because she's cheap and she can open possibilities for you to diversify your gear portfolio Okay, now let's move on to the city section and we are back to having a lot of options. So the first option is going to be Bio, then we have Mystic, Skill, Tech and Mutant. With the Bio options, we have Lizard. Lizard right now is amazing, is a tank, he attacks all enemies with or he attacks multiple enemies with all of his abilities. He's very powerful, he gets speed bar when you're facing Spider-Verse characters, which many times they are city, so it's very likely that he's going to go fast many times in that dimension, so he's going to be the best option. Sinister Six and Superior Six, right now they are completely dominating Alliance Wars, Cosmic Crucible, and so on. Avengers Tower as well, so this is definitely something that you should have into consideration. The second character of the Biotap that I'm going to recommend is Gwenom. Yes, she's a new character, yes, she's not available in-game, but she has a turn one stun, her speed is okay-ish, she has some survivability mechanics like uh, evades, so this is a character that you should keep an eye open uh, or a, uh, an eye on as she can maybe provide some value. Maybe not right now, but in the future, I think uh, she will show up for sure. Because anytime we have characters with turn one stun, they are always relevant. Then we have uh, Spider-Man 2099. He's fast, he's furious, he's, he's going together with uh, Spider-Weaver and uh, because of that, he's pretty decent. Now, his stats are a little bit lackluster. But if you pair him up with the right characters, he can be an okay option. Finally, we have Spider-Woman. Spider-Woman, she is okay. She just has very long cooldowns. She has okay stats as well. So she can also be an uh, option if uh, you are a fan of her. Now, in terms of Mystic characters, we have Robbie Ray's Ghost Rider. This is the best Mystic character that you can bring to Dark Dimension 6. Then we have Cloak. Cloak is okay. He does not benefit a lot of gear tier 18 and uh, he also uses the same item as Robbie Ray's Ghost Rider. So you have to decide between one and the other and of course that Robbie Ray's is a lot better than Cloak. Cloak uh, he is, he is great, don't get me wrong, like Cloak is really great, it's just a problem that he does not scale with gear, he's a kit based character and because of that you don't see a lot of value out of him. Spider-Man Noir, this is an option that some people told me it was very, very good. And Spider-Man Spider Noir, unlike Cloak, he scales very well the gear. So the more gear you put on Spider-Man Noir, the better. The problem is that a lot of people don't know how to play with Spider-Man Noir and in which situations to use him. So because of that, he has some bad reputation, but he's definitely not a bad character. Finally, for the Mystic Trait, we have uh, Mr. Negative. And uh, this guy is okay, let's say that. He has very long cooldowns, he has decent stats, I guess. He summons minions, and those minions can uh, serve as decoys. But the best thing about Mr. Negative is that he's very, very cheap. And that's pretty much it. Now, in terms of the skill characters, the best skill character that is right now is Craven the Hunter. Part of the Superior Six, part of the Sinister Six. He applies ability blocks, negative effects like bleeds, offense down, slows. This guy is super crazy, super good. Definitely worth uh, your investment when it comes to the skill gear. The second best option is still Shang-Chi. The turning wind that he does with a massive amount of damage, unavoidable ultimates, and uh, being able to heal up himself by a lot and clearing negative effects from the enemies still provide a lot of value on Dark Dimension 6. He's also very cheap, 
but unfortunately in terms of other game modes he's not uh, seeing as much play as he saw in the past in cosmic crucible you can still use him sometimes but in alliance wars he's just a sleeper heroes for hire team as this is a team that is is still uh, being used but uh, it's not getting a lot of value compared to other teams then we have ronin and ronin is okay that's it is an option he's quite expensive to get up because of his centerpiece unique and uh, his abilities don't provide a lot of value it's just some bleeds some uh, blind or something it's not great and finally we have kingpin kingpin is very cheap his minions are quite annoying for the enemies to deal with so you can definitely get some value out of this guy and it's still a decent option in alliance wars cosmic crucible on specific situations then we have the tech characters we have vulture vulture right now is one of the best characters in the game he does turn you to the enemies he does massive single target damage he removes positive effects from the enemies while applying slow and offense down so he's definitely quite powerful and on top of that he gets a bunch of speed bar whenever allies or enemies die even if they are minions so vulture is quite great right now then we have a spider-man big time spider-man big time he has a massive amount of stats his kit is not great but because he has such a high stats he can get some decent value in uh, in uh, dark dimension 6 the cooldowns are somewhat low for the special which can also provide you some value but it's just that it's just a massive wall of stats and that's pretty much it then we have spider slayer spider slayer is a okay character he's part of the sinister six superior six and as you guys can see we have multiple characters of that faction and you can bring all of them to dark dimension six it's quite a fun team to play with spider slayer it does not provide a lot of value for other characters apart from defense up with his special but uh, in other game modes he can one shot people with his ultimate and because of that, uh, this is definitely a character that uh, you're going to get value if you decide to invest in him. And finally, we have Mysterio. Mysterio is not great in Dark Dimension 6, but because we have so many Sinister 6 characters in this section, if you decide to get up, Mysterio is okay. I mean, if you're a fan of Mysterio, you can use him, but uh, you should definitely prioritize the other ones first. And finally, for the City section, we have the Mutant characters. And the only mutant characters that have any value right now is Firestar and uh, Miss Marvel Art Light. And uh, both of them are part of great teams. Both of them have uh, somewhat individual value if you know how to use them. And because of that, you should definitely invest in them. Now, the character with the highest value is going to be Firestar if you are using her on offense. If you are using on defense or if you want to have a defensive character, then Art Light is going to be the best option, but I would still prioritize Firestar over Art Light. And finally, for the last section, we have uh, the Legendary Lane. And for this lane, we have uh, the non Horseman section, and then we have the Horseman section. So the best uh, Legendary characters is going to be Black Cat. She's the best Legendary right now. Turn one stun with Trauma. That alone changes everything, but then she has a basic that applies turn you wind and slow to the enemies by 5%. And if you ever has a striker, this is going to be 10%. With a slow, that means that the turn you wind will get 50% more value. And because of that, she's quite impactful in this type of game modes, like Dark Dimension. But she has value in all game modes in game right now. Then we have Nova. Nova is okay. He has a battlefield effect that heals your team, provides the flex, clear negative effects. He also, the, he also has a nice amount of stats. He also has a turn one stun. So because of that, he also has some decent value compared to Black Hat. But because Black Hat applies trauma, she's way, way better. Then we have uh, Green Goblin. And Green Goblin is okay. I was actually thinking about making Omega Red before Green Goblin. Because Green Goblin is dependent on having characters that protect him or that boost him, like a Dr. Octopus. So, if you have Green Goblin with Dr. Oct Octopus, Green Goblin is very good. If you don't have a Green Goblin together with Dr. Octopus, it's kind of mid to kind of mediocre. So, yeah, I think Omega Red on his own is way, way better than Green Goblin. It's all about if you have Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus or not. So, yeah, if you, want to prior if you don't have a lot of mutant gear, Definitely take Omega Red first, and then Green Goblin, but uh, it's just the way it is. Green Goblin on his own, is, he does not have a lot of value. 
And the final, we have uh, Dr. Octopus. Dr. Octopus is okay. The best part about Dr. Octopus is that he summons Shocker, and Shocker can be used as a decoy. Now, if you have Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus, then Shocker can turn you on the enemies, and because of that, that Shocker that you summon will provide to you a lot of value. Every time that uh, Shocker dies, you can uh, revive him with the Dr. Octopus special, and he's going to come back to battle with a full cooldown, so you can really abuse of that situation, but uh, it's an expensive option. You have to get up Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus, and uh, both of these characters are quite expensive to get up. Okay, finally, we have the Horseman characters. We have uh, the best Horseman characters. They are in no particular order, except the, the best ones, but not in terms of gear. So we have Morgan Le Fay Mystic. She's still the best character in terms of Horseman because she provides the most amount of stats and she has the best abilities. So she provides health 50%, resistance 100%. She applies trauma to the enemy, especially if they are controllers. She does speed bar manipulation. Like anyone that says that Morgan Fay is not the best horseman, they are wrong. Then we have Red Hulk. His bio, it also provides some turning wind. He's quite fast early on, but his cooldowns and the value of his abilities drop down in value quite fast, especially because the ultimate of this guy has a very long cooldown. So you're gonna be spamming basic and specials pretty much most of the time. Then we have Rogue, with her ability block on the special, she also applies Defense Town, Trauma, Disrupt, and a bunch of other things. So you can get a lot of value out of her, as long as you keep saving her cooldowns, or as long as you have someone that is providing energy to her. If this is not the case, then she's also me, the Horseman character, that you can bring along, that is going to be spamming basics most of the time. And then we have Archangel, Archangel, unless you have Archangel with a seven red stars and with diamonds he is very very mediocre he does not have a lot of hp he does not have a lot of stats he relies too much on being together with magneto morgan Fay, and apocalypse and if that's not the case he's very very bad okay guys so th that's the definitive recommendation for the best characters for dark dimension 6 right now i made sure that i gave you a lot of options so you can decide which ones you like the most, which ones you have diamonds on, or red stars on, or anything like that, or the characters that are your farmable, or just the teams that you like in general. All of these characters that I mentioned, they are pretty good and they have value in multiple game modes, so they are mostly safe investments, but of course you should definitely focus on the characters that are at the top. So that's going to be the recommendations for Dark Dimension 6 for now and we'll see in the future when we'll get the next patch or uh, when we have more information about the uh, dark dimension 7 but for now this is definitely what you should follow in case you want to unlock super scroll as fast as possible and now so have uh, the the most double up and value for other game modes so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you smash that like button and if you found the information helpful make sure you share this video with your friends on facebook and discord if you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe for more mouse force content and i'll catch you guys later